Hello and welcome back and today I want to show you guys how to set up a Terramaster NAS for the very first time. Precisely, I want to talk about the F4422, their brand new 10GBE NAS. Now we're going to do a full software overview of this device as well as speed testing of this and the brand new F2422, the 2-bay and indeed the 4-bay 10GBE NAS systems. But I wanted to show you guys how to set one of these up for the very first time from beginning with all raw parts on the table to the operating system and the graphical user interface to show you guys exactly how to set it up on day one. Because this is a very budget solution, a number of you out there will buy this and not really have any real experience with network attached storage. So this video is very much aimed at you. But a few things straight off the bat. Although I am focusing on the F4 here, what I'm going through today will apply to pretty much any TerraMaster NAS. Second thing, I am utilizing two Seagate IronWolf hard drives, and although this is a four bay NAS with RAID 5 capabilities, the reason I'm using two disks, I'm gonna go for a RAID 1, is this system is going to be used in some performance testing later on, as well as showing how to expand RAID levels. So I thought it'd be very interesting to go ahead with two disks on day one, and then add drives in a future following video, as well as a software overview, of course. But I'm going for these two drives, but bear in mind, everything I'm going to do today is going to apply to pretty much anyone who's going to use two, three, or four drives. You can even utilize a single hard drive on one of these. So don't be put off by the fact that I've only got two disks inside. What I'm going through today will apply to pretty much any of them, regardless of the number of drives. So this is a fresh install. There's no power connected to this. I've not connected, I've not booted this up um, ever. This is the first time set up of this device. And these drives are clean drives. They've got no data on them. They'll be completely formatted. So if you do buy brand new drives, this is pretty much what you're gonna find. Now that little beep in the background, by the way, is the F2. We can just make out down there. We're in the middle of a mobile um, update on that one, just showing you guys how to set one up with a mobile phone. So do bear in mind, although today's video is gonna be using my desktop PC, you can set one of these up with the mobile app. And that is another video that's either already about, to, already gone live, or coming soon and that's where we've set up the f2 using nothing but a mobile phone but first thing we need to do is make sure there's no power or network connectivity on this we've not connected it to the router um, and the device does arrive with the screws and the screwdriver that you're going to need you'll have to buy your drive separately do make sure you buy nas drives because you want to make sure you get hard drives that are used to being read and written to simultaneously as well as being on 24 7. so in my case i'm going to install two hard drives I'm going to take two bays out, but again, you draw the number of bays out that you're going to need for your drives. So, in the case of this one, make sure that the SATA connection, that is the port on the base, is facing out with the label up, and then place it in the tray. And again, what you need there is the label face up and the connector out. So where the handle is, don't have the connector there, you need it facing out there. So, put the drive face down and then stick in all four screws. Now again, they are labeled, the silver screws are the three and a half inch screws. The black screws are for two and a half inch SSDs. And again, this device does support hard drives and SSDs. Currently hard drives at the time of recording uh, go up to 16 terabytes in size. And those 16 terabytes are available from Seagate Ironwolf for their NAS series. There are larger drives becoming available uh, from both Seagate and their Exos series and WD in their gold and uh, DC data center HGST drives, or not HGST, Ultrastar even, but I recommend sticking with just NAS drives. And remember, big drives like this will make a little bit more noise. So the larger the drive, the more enterprise the build, the more hums and clicks you are going to hear, and they'll probably get picked up in the background when we switch to that laptop right there. So we've got that first drive installed, we'll get the second drive there. Second thing to bear in mind while we're getting these drives in, remember, SATA port out, is that when you're setting this up, you are going to need to make sure that this NAS is connected or is going to be connected to uh, either your local area network. So a lot of you probably don't know the difference between the network and the internet. It's simply a case of inside and outside. Now, the, mo the, um, the classic example I throw out in a lot of my videos is to do with um, houses on a street. Now, imagine a street that connects to a wider collection of roads or a motorway. Now, the motorway is the internet, but connected to that is this road that we're stood on. This road is the network. This network has lots of houses on it. Now, each one of those houses 
is a TV, a computer, a mobile phone. Each device on the network is a little house. But ultimately, that street is the one connection to the internet. You need to make sure this NAS is one of the houses on your network. So all the devices in your home that share the same internet connection, wirelessly or wired, they're on the same internet, they are the same network. If they're using the same internet, they are on the same network, like a circuit. So you have to make sure this device is connected to that network, which then has access to the internet later on, because it's gonna to need to download firmware updates and software, as well as set up remote internet access. And that's it really, we've got the two drives pre-installed. The next thing we need to do is connect our network cable, that's the ethernet cable. Now, this device does have a 10 GBE port and a couple of 1 GBE ports on it. Go for the 1 GBEs on day one. You don't have to do that, but you know it never hurts to do that. Plus the 10 GBE port you may use later on. So you want to make sure that the default 1 GBE connection is the one you proceed with moving forward. And again, on the rear, just pick one of those network cables there and connect the cable. It will click, and that means that cable's connected. The next thing you need to connect is your power. And that power cable connecting into the rear there will go in quite straightforward, go straight in. And as soon as you connect it, you may notice the fans on the rear slightly judder. That's a good sign. It means the PSU is functioning and the PSU should have a little green light on it to let you know it's working. So we've got the drives inside. We've connected the power and the Ethernet cable and then this Ethernet cable is going into a switch over here. And all that's left to do is click the power button. And that's it really, you have to allow three to five minutes for this device to boot up and begin uh, the initialization for you to interact with it. And in the meantime, what we're gonna do is give it a few minutes so you can hear those enterprise level drives click in there. That is what you get from enterprise drives, by the way. Huge capacity, great speed, but they will click and whir a little bit more. That is not the system, that's the drives. But what we're gonna do is switch over to this desktop in a few minutes from now, and that will allow me to show you guys how to set this device up with the TerraMaster software. Let's give it a couple of minutes and make our way to the screen. Okay, so you've given it five to 10 minutes for your TerraMaster to boot up fully and scan the drive, something that will make a lot more sense later. Just double checking that we're screen recording and we'll carry on. But first thing you need to do is head over to the TerraMaster website and go to the support section. Drop down to the download option and from there, go to the list of available downloads. Now you can either look up the NAS that you're trying to uh, install uh, the NAS software on, the F, in my case, the F4422, or you can go ahead and use any of them really, because the core software we're looking for right now is the desktop application TNAS. It's available for both Mac and Windows systems and very small and easy to download. There's also a link to the operating system and updates to that firmware operating system that TerraMaster arrives with on the NAS. But you can download those from within the system itself, so it's not strictly necessary. Once you've downloaded that application, it's a .exe and is very easy to install. When you've done that, it looks like this. Now this application allows you to do a number of things. You can scan your local area network and find NASes. As you can see, there's still the two bay NAS that I'm doing a mobile installation for in another video, but here is RT NAS, our F4422. And from here we can do a few things. We can go directly into it and start the installation, or once it's set up, you can use this tool to access the files utilizing your local file manager on your Windows or Mac system or map a network drive. You can even change the IP or the address of your device on that street network that we described earlier. But for now, click the login button and it will display this. This is the initialization page on your web browser. From here, click start. Now, the drives that you've installed inside, once you started up that TerraMaster for the first time, it ran a smart test in the background, an SMART test on the drive media to make sure they are suitable for a NAS. It also double checks that there isn't any inconsistencies or bad blocks, and it won't let you proceed until these checks have been done, as you can see. But now the checks have been done uh, prior to the start of this video, I can go ahead and click next.
It will then ask if you'd like to download the software for running TOS. Now the system already has TOS inside the device without the internet, but it won't be the most recent version. And because of re like security precautions, anti-malware uh, and stuff like that, I recommend you get the latest version of the software. So if you did download the software from the website earlier, you can find it on your local system here and upload it to the TerraMaster and install it. Otherwise, go to auto download and it will download the software automatically to the TerraMaster. It will then warn you that the drives will be deleted during this process, which can take between five and 10 minutes depending on your internet connection. Click OK and it will now begin the installation of TOS on that NAS. This will take again, as I mentioned, about five to 10 minutes. And when it's done, this page will refresh and then it will ask you to set up your RAID on this box for the very first time. Once the firmware update has been installed, the system will reboot and you'll be presented with this initialization screen. The admin name is listed as admin and you can change that later, but for now you can't change it. Next, you need to add a password to this device that fits the security protocol and credentials listed below. And then from there, make sure that password is the same. Now, you can set the time zone, which for me will be Greenwich Mean Time, and this is going to be useful for when setting the device up with internet and network access and connecting to other devices. Now, if you enter a security code with a verification code, you can utilize this for recovering the device as well as setting up internet access. I've already got a guide on this and I recommend you check that out. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and skip that step. So for now, I'm going to click next, but it still needs me to add a password. And then from there, I'm going to skip there and go to the next step. For here, you need to create a storage pool. This is going to be the RAID where the available hard drives are combined together. So if you've got one or more drives, you need to create that storage pool and then afterwards create a volume. For now, go ahead with create a new storage pool. Select the drives that you want to use and I'm gonna use both of these 14 TB Seagate Ironwolf NAS drives in a RAID 1. There are other RAID configurations available to you, and each RAID will depend on the number of drives available in the system. A RAID 0, for example, combines those drives into a single storage pool, but with no data protection or safety net if a drive fails. The same goes with JBoard as loose drives, but a RAID 1 mirrors both of these drives, giving you one drive of data fallback safety, but also means you only get half of the total available capacity. Click confirm and it will let you know that it is going to wipe the data on those disks. Click confirm to go forward. It will then ask you if you want to use ext4 or btrfs. ext4 is the older generation but far more tested file format. It's the Linux operating system and pretty much the go-to across the majority of NAS devices. BTRFS is a slightly newer file system that does present certain advantages with regards to faster shared folder replication, faster background snapshots to be taken with less of an impact on system hardware, and file self-healing with checksums being created at the beginning and end of every tra data transmission, which can then use to repair itself on the fly without your intervention. It just happens to be not quite as high performing as EXT4. For now, I'm going to stick with BTRFS. After this, confirm the settings you've selected, then select confirm. It will now begin to set up our brand new RAID on these disks. And after this, it will then boot into the TOS graphical user interface on the TerraMaster NAS. This shouldn't take more than a minute or two for a RAID 1, but more complex RAID configurations such as RAID 5, RAID 6, and perhaps RAID 10 will take a little bit longer than this, upwards of a day in some cases, depending on the size of the drives. For now, let's fast forward to the completion of the RAID format. Now the RAID format has been completed, this page will refresh, and it will allow you to boot into TOS 4.1 on your TerraMaster NAS. Just enter the password that you created earlier along with your admin name. Click login and this will allow you to access the TerraMaster NAS on your desktop PC and allow you to add apps, add other users and effectively take advantage of your brand new TerraMaster NAS system. If you want to go through and add users or play around with some of the storage that you've created, go into the control panel and from here you can cater and change a number of their settings. Check if you've got the most recent update down here as well as look out for beta applications too. If 
you want to take advantage of the system's multi-user platform and want to add users or add groups if you're an employer, go ahead. If you want to create a shared folder and therefore create a mapped network drive, this will allow you to create a folder that is visible on your local PC system. So we give this one the folder name test. We put it on that volume we created earlier, click next. So if we want to encrypt it or not, click next. Say who can access it. And then for now, I'm going to say full access to all users, click next, and it's now going to create that new shared folder. Head back into that TNAS application from earlier and go to map drive. Click map drive, log in with the credentials once again that you've created, and this will allow you to create a folder on your local PC or Mac system that will allow you to interact with the NAS data on your local PC rather than accessing it on your NAS via the web browser. And this allows you to map that network drive moving forward and add a drive to your NAS system. From there, you can also go into the file manager, which will allow you to browse through the NAS manually. And of course, from here, you can also start installing those applications. There's lots of recommended applications for handling multimedia, handling multiple backups, and more. There's the new Dupe Backup and Dupe Backup Vault that allow you to play with um, a new strategy with your backups from NAS to NAS, NAS to cloud, NAS to USB, and more. As well as now, the new integration of VirtualBox for installing virtual machines on your TerraMaster NAS. But I'm gonna wrap things up there. Do check out my mobile application install for the TerraMaster F2, and I hope you enjoy using your TerraMaster NAS. We will be doing a software overview of the brand new TOS platform and all its new updates here on the TerraMaster F4 very soon, as well as speed testing over 10 GBE on this new generation of affordable Intel-based 10 GBE NAS. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Click like if you've enjoyed this video. Click subscribe to learn more, and I'll see you next time.